أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Elohim Yahweh Jehovah without a partner without a son or father and I testify that Muhammad Jesus Moses Abraham Noah where are the prophets the servants and messengers of Allah peace be upon all of them my dear brothers and sisters in Islam salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers and sisters in humanity salam alaikum as you all know as usually I greet you in the greeting over the greeting of Islam which is salam peace be upon you today is a new video about the contradictions in the Bible which prove that the Bible cannot be the Word of God so without further ado let's start with the first one the first one is Joseph Joseph the carpenter Mary's husband yeah the husband of Mary and Mary was the mother of Jesus now this is the genealogy of Jesus where am I getting this of course as usually here Matthew chapter 1 1 verses 1 through to 16 well what we're not gonna go through the whole thing we're not going through the whole thing I'll take you straight to the point here Joseph is son of who? Joseph's father is who? Jacob yeah you see that? I need you to remember now I'll take you somewhere else in the Bible and I'll take you to Luke chapter 3 Hmm. So, in Luke chapter 3, verse 23, read here please. But I am going to read for you. Now, Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he be began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli. Joseph, Joseph the carpenter, husband of Mary, was who? The son of Heli in here. See that? This is in Luke. In Matthew, Joseph, Joseph's father is Jacob, son of Heli, son of Jacob. Now, what is going on here? I thought that the book of God has been inspired by the Holy Spirit to these men. You call them apostles or disciples of Jesus. Luke and Matthew. So what's going on? Did the Holy Spirit get it wrong or forgot? Or was it the, the, the apostle of God, uh, Luke and Matthew, who made a mistake? Or was it someone printing or what? Did the God of the Bible uh, allow such mistakes how are we going to know who's father but anyway it, it does not matter to me who is the father of Joseph Joseph all I know Joseph the carpenter married Mary he was uh, 74 and she was 12 years old this is an information for you guys who are always throwing stones on us about our beloved prophet Mary and Aisha at the age of nine he was 50 Joseph the carpenter your in your book was 74 when he married Mary when she was 12 now check the the difference and get back to me this is Mary the the mother of your God was 12 years old when she married Joseph okay I hope you are getting that now, 
The next one is without moving uh, very far, we're in the very same books, in the very same chapters. So in Matthew chapter 1, it talks about, of course, the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, peace be upon him. And Matthew links him to jo Joseph the carpenter. Yeah. The only different than, than Luke uh, links him to this very same man, Joseph the carpenter, links him to a different descendant. But I, I just want to tell you and highlight this point. Matthew and Luke, they take the genealogy uh, the opposite way from each other. One starts from Joseph, yeah, like here. Luke starts from Joseph and goes all the way, son of, son of, son of, son of, son of, until he gets to Nathan, the son of David, okay? Whereas Matthew actually starts from Abraham, yeah, and it says, whose father, the father of Jacob is, and then so on and so forth, until he gets to David, yeah, and from David comes Solomon, and from Solomon goes all the way down to Joseph. Are you following me? I hope I'm not confusing you. It's just that Matthew starts from the ancestors, to Joseph, whereas Luke starts from Joseph going up, okay? Are we following each other here? One starts from me going up to my grand, great, 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 great father, and the other one starts from my great father coming back down to me. Fine, they can start wherever they want. But there's one problem. It's when they link Joseph in one side, Luke. Luke says that Joseph is a descendant of David through who? Through Nathan. Yeah? Whereas Matthew says that Joseph is the son of David through who? Through Solomon. Here, David was the father of Solomon, blah, blah, blah. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, and going all the way down to Joseph. Do you guys see the contradiction here? The Holy Spirit gave them two different names. In the very same chapter, guys, remember? One says that Joseph is son of Jacob. The other one says that Joseph is son of Heli. And then again, the second contradiction or the second mistake, grave mistake, is linking Joseph the carpenter, husband of Mary, mother of Jesus, to David through Nathan, and the other one linking again Joseph to David through Solomon. Okay? I hope you get this. I'll move on. I'm not going to stick to it. I hope you do some research. And if I'm mistaken, please, please, I, I stand corrected. Please correct me. Next one. And we're not going very far. The very same books, the very same chapters. Just another contradiction. So, Luke, um, well, I'm showing you now, Matthew chapter 1 verse 12 as you can see I just want to scroll up and down to show you where I'm getting things that I'm not jumping here and there so if you read after the exile to Babylon Jeconiah was the father of Sh Shiltiel or Shiltiel okay remember this bit Shiltiel Father, son of Jeconiah. So Jeconiah is the father of Shealtiel. Remember this? Let's go to Luke now. Shealtiel was son of Neri. 
I'm not getting it from anywhere. Here it is, Luke chapter 3, and we are going back here. Son of Neri. So, um, I don't know what you do with it, but I'll leave it with you to check. So, next one. While looking at all this, I remember in another video me saying or talking about the incest. Incest, you know what is that? It's sex within, sex within the family. I spoke about Judah and Tamar. Judah and Tamar. So Judah is the father-in-law of Tamar. But because Tamar's husband, the son of Judah, died, so his second son had to uh, marry Tamar. Yeah. And Amon, uh, Amon or Amnon refused to actually have children with Tamar because he didn't like his children to be his brothers. Yeah, they will take his brother's name, they will not be his children. But they... So, what happened is Judah once go into his business, he found that daughter-in-law who knew that he was going somewhere so she dressed as a prostitute and sat on the, on the road he saw her he asked her to uh, you know do what a man does to a prostitute and then she had children she had of course children from him and those children the the children of uh, of incest are actually the descendants of well they are the descendants of um, Joseph Joseph the carpenter the husband of Mary but you Christian needs to understand that the Bible is actually forcing Jesus on to be the son of uh, Joseph whom is a descendant of uh, sexual immorality just so you would know but we're here uh, so I showed you all that the only problem in here that Zero Babel was the father of Abi Hud whereas in here Zero Babel was the, was the son of Risa so Zero Babel here has on one side a father called Risa in Luke and in Matthew his father is that now if you go back to the actually the real genealogy in Chronicles you will see that Zerubbabel did not have any of them too so it where do you get that you get that from Chronicles chapter 3 and then you will find the the, the proper genera genealogy so I'll leave that to you guys and uh, go to somewhere else next one the next one is in Matthew chapter 1 in Matthew chapter 1 verse 8 you can see that Uzziah here is the son of Jehoram yeah in 2nd Chronicles 26 Um, King Uzziah was the son of Amaziah. You can read yourself. Now, how do we know that this is the same Uzziah? Very simple. We read down that Uzziah had a son called Jotham. Yeah? We go here and we will see the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham the very same person okay so yeah another one that the God of the Bible actually allowed or made 
I don't know whether it's the Holy Spirit or it's 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 Luke or the writer of Chronicles or you guys are just read anything and you don't even try to see these things. You actually turn a blind eye. You don't want to know about them yet. Um, they're big mistakes. These are not little mistakes. You would not find someone in Islam tell you tell you that, oh, uh, Prophet Muhammad has a son called um, Lakhdar, and the Prophet Muhammad's father was uh, Jalil. No, we all know who is the father of the, our beloved Prophet. We all know his children, who died, of course, all of them. So. There is no way you will find, and in the Quran there is no way you will find someone called something here and called something else in there, where his father is here and something and his father somewhere else is some one else. You will not find that, and I challenge any of you to show me that. Because in here, in the genealogy, it's a disaster, guys. It is a disaster. Okay, I won't be um, talking too much about this. I will move on next one then. The next one I'm taking you um, to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, in chapter 11. First 12, we're talking about Sheila. Sheila in Genesis is son of Arfaxad. In Luke, Sheila is the son of Canaan. Now, how do we know that we are talking about the same Sheila? Because I know that the Jerry and Christian Prince and others who are very smart, they would want that. So, in here, Sheila, yeah, is the father of who? Of Eber, or Eber. So, the son of Eber. Eber is the son of Shelah. So let's go to Genesis. In Genesis, uh, Shelah here had a son called Eber or Eber. So when Shelah, here you can read, had lived 30 years, he became the father of Eber. So Eber in here is the son of Shelah. How do we know it's the same Eber? Of course, Eber here is the father of Peleg. So Eber had the son, son called Peleg. Peleg is the son of Eber. And then Eber later on, Eber blah blah blah, lived 34, became the father of Peleg. Remember, Eber is the father of Peleg. It's exactly the same thing in here. Yeah, Peleg, the son of Peleg, the son of Iber. Okay, so Peleg is the son of Iber. Genesis, Iber, when Iber had lived, look, 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 father, he became the father of Peleg. Are you following me? Peleg was the father of Ru, Ryu. Yeah? Here. Peleg was that. Here was the son, the son of Ryu, the son of Peleg. So Ryu is the son of Peleg. Get out of here. This. Ryu, the son of Peleg. Ryu, the son of Peleg. Genesis. Uh -huh. Peleg had, had a son called Ryu. And I can take you all the way through. I want you not to take my word for it, but pull out your book, the book that you consider as the Word of God, and check it. Clear contradiction. Okay? Mistakes like this, uh, no human will make. Okay? Yet, the God of the, of the Bible has no problem making. Uh, I'll leave that. Moving on. So the next one is between the book of John and the book of Matthew. 
course John chapter 1 it all goes oh the word became blood flush flesh sorry not flush anyway in the beginning what beginning are we talking about here can you guys tell me what beginning I thought God is eternal and if he is eternal then he has no beginning there should not be any beginning the word beginning should not be used in here I tell you what happened John wanted to copy from the book of Genesis when it says in the beginning in there it is talking about the world not God so if it is talking about the the, uh, the world fine but when you're talking about God you cannot use the word beginning okay any even if you're talking about uh, the, the word whom later on is going to be flesh and is going to be Lord God Jesus because if you say that Jesus has a beginning therefore he's not a God he's not part of God he's nothing like God so I advise you guys to reject the book of John because it it put a beginning to the the deity that you worship so it says in the beginning there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God okay yet it's beginning you use the word beginning and you demolish your deity and that's what happened but I'm not here for that I'm here for a totally different thing and it is the story of John the Baptist so he was asked okay he sent someone Jewish leaders sent priests and Levites to ask him a few questions and the first one was are you the Messiah say I'm not the Messiah okay are you Elijah you say I'm not Elijah are you the prophet he answered no oh by the way this is another challenge for you who is this prophet here being talked about but I leave that to you do some research my point here is he is he was asked are you Elijah he said I am not this is in John now let's go to Matthew Matthew where Matthew 11 and 11 again so Jesus now is talking about who is talking about John the Baptist Jesus is saying I truly truly I tell you among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist read on until you get here and if you are willing to accept it he is the Elijah who was to come so in here Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse uh, 14 Jesus himself is saying that John the Baptist is Elijah okay yet in John John the Baptist himself is saying I am not Elijah hmm what do we do with this um that's it I made my point but on top of these two points I ask two questions who is the prophet in here are you the prophet John the Baptist said no they're waiting for a prophet the Jews are waiting for the prophet I say the prophet they're waiting for is the prophet Muhammad of Islam and that is why the Israelite actually migrated from Palestine to Saudi Arabia to a place called Taima which is Medina nowadays where the prophet actually uh, had his own state but anyway remember this is the Prophet Muhammad 
And the second point, while I was showing you the contradiction between uh, Matthew and John about John the Baptist being the Elijah or not being the Elijah, now I showed you another point, which is the beginning. And the word beginning here, he's talking about God. The word God, God, God. So since there was a beginning, I'm sorry, you have no deity here. Hmm? He was... With God in the beginning, again the beginning. What beginning are we talking about? And anyway, I'll leave all that with you. Though, if I have to discuss it, I will say, okay, God was there in the beginning, fine. And he uttered a word. A word became flesh, which is Jesus. Fine, that I will believe it. But don't tell me that the word was, was God. The word was not God, because God is the one who uttered, who said that word. And that word became flesh? Fine, I'm okay with you. And that flesh is Jesus? Fine, I'm with you. But the word, or the flesh, or Jesus, is not God. There is no way he can be God. Okay? Because he has a beginning. His beginning is the moment God uttered that word, said that word, be, and he is. And that is like you guys put it as 25th of December, 2000 years ago, 2019 years ago. Okay, that's it, it's clear for now for this, uh, I'll move on. The next one is a little bit complicated for someone who does not know much about the Bible. But I'm going to take you step by step. And I would want you to use your book and use Google, use a website that shows you the Bible. You guys all know that Jesus is supposed to uh, be given the throne of his father David. Yeah? Okay? So that's something that you, you guys all know and all believe in. Now, the problem with that is that uh, in Jeremiah chapter 3, I'll take you where I'm taking, of course, 36 in here. Uh, going all the way down here, it speaks about this man. I'm giving you some time to read. Or you compose and read and then get back to it. So, therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. Okay? You understand now? Now, the problem with this is this guy here is one of the ancestors of Jesus. Okay? He's here. Jehoiakim had Joan and his son and then this Joachim actually had all these descendants whom are the um, the um, what do you call it the lineage or the ancestors of Jesus okay so I hope you guys will look into it and check it. And when you guys go through, I, I just need to remind you again, in Luke is there, it's clear. Uh, in, in Jeremiah, this guy here should not have descendants to actually be on the throne of David. Yet he is here a descendant of Solomon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solomon. Solomon, of course, son of David. That is how he was supposed to be go through. But it's very unfortunate that this man was cursed and he could not have any of his descendants sit on the throne of David. And Jesus is one of his descendants. So 
he's not supposed to be on the throne of King David as opposed to Luke chapter 1 is supposed to be did I show you this? yeah of course it's supposed to be um, the descendant who will um, inherit the throne of his father David, King David that's it for this one, I will move on the next one here talks about you know that event where it's in Luke 19 where Jesus told his son to go and get me the court so those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them as they were untying the court the owner of the court what are you guys doing say well our Lord needs it that's it so they brought it and so it's the cult one cult let's see what Mark says when they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it he sat on it so Luke and Mark were in Mark 11 they're saying the cult Matthew let's see what he shows he tells us Matthew 21 verse here you can read the disciples several went and did as Jesus instructed them they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloak on them for Jesus to sit on so in here it's a donkey and a colt in here is just a colt this is Mark and in Luke the colt 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 donkey and colt what is it it's only the God of the Bible knows it it's amazing I don't know about you this is what it is I hope you will uh, reconcile it okay moving on next one is about how did Peter find out that Jesus is the Messiah we're gonna check the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Matthew since we're here this is the Bible this is the Gospel of Matthew and I'm going to show you scrolling up Matthew 16 going all the way down here to verse 17 when he says my father in heaven but I need you to you read and uh -huh. you decide for yourself so what about you Jesus is asking who do you say I am Simon answered you are the Messiah the son of the living God so Jesus is saying to him blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood by by ma but by by my father in heaven okay so Peter was told by the father in heaven that Jesus is the Messiah the son of the living God okay now let's see what John says John says in here in where I'm doing and scrolling up and down just to show you where I'm getting this Gospel of John chapter 1 scrolling down verse 41 Andrew Simon Peter's brother was one of the two who heard that John and John had said and had followed Jesus the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Peter uh, Simon whom is Peter and tell him we have found the Messiah so Simon is Peter okay you remember Simon Peter or Peter Simon Petros at the time so Simon found out through his brother Andrew in the book of John whereas in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 Jesus telling him here read this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood but by 
my Father in heaven. So it's the Father in heaven who revealed to Peter, Simon, that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of the living God. I will leave it. I'm not, I'm not going to go beyond that. Okay, you check it. The next one is in Matthew 9 verse 18 it's about the the story of the girl yeah so her father you can read the whole story but I just want to emphasize on that my he is saying that this father here is saying my daughter has just died okay she has just died so she's dead and he goes and he looks for someone to heal her, bring her back to life he finds the Jesus okay remember she just died this is in the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 18 let's check mark in the book of mark chapter 5 verse 23 he pleaded earnestly with him He pleaded earnestly with him, saying this, quote, My little daughter is dying. So which is it? Is she dying? Or has she died? Is it different? Here, she's dead. She's gone. In here, she is dying. She's not dead yet. So I think the, the, the God of the Bible needs to kind of be a little bit more specific which is it she's dead already or she's dying so we'll leave that to you guys um again you can get back to me and correct me the next one is in matthew chapter 10 okay it is about the staff so jesus is telling them go on a journey take this and don't take that so in in book of Matthew, uh, let's scroll to show you, Matthew chapter 10, verse 9, uh, sorry, verse 10, where he starts from verse 9, where he tells them what to take, what to take. so no bag for the journey, or extra shirt, or sandals, or staff, so no staff, okay, no, all that, no staff, okay, now we're in Mark chapter 6, I'll show you. So he's saying, these were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except the staff. So it's okay, they can take staff in here. Jesus is sending the twelve out, okay? Jesus is sending them out. So in Matthew chapter 10, no staff. Mark chapter 6, verse 8, yes, you can take staff. But no bread, no bag, no money in your bed. Just a staff. In Luke chapter 9, verse 3, he told them, and it's still again that, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt, whatever. Okay, no staff in here. Luke chapter 9, no staff. Mark chapter 6, staff. Matthew chapter 10 no staff mm. now guys the Bible the, the, the God of the Bible is making a lot of mistakes I, I really don't understand what is going on here uh, will, will you be able to um, elaborate on this take staff don't take staff what is going on is the Holy Spirit not reporting properly what, what happened to him? Okay, that's it. No more comment. I'll move on. Next one is, Herod thought that Jesus is John the Baptist, and then he thought that John the Baptist is Jesus. It's all a mix-up. Let's start with Matthew 14. At that time, Herod, he, the, the detract, heard the reports about Jesus and he said to his attendant this is John the Baptist he has risen again because 
because of this. He wrote, heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded. So he wrote here, he's supposed to have beheaded John. And when he heard about Moses, um, he thought, sorry, when he heard about Jesus, he thought, this is John who came back from the dead. And as you can see here again, he wrote, say, I beheaded John. Who then is this? I hear such things. That. And he tried to see him. What is going on? I, I don't know here. <laughs> Jesus is Jesus. And John the Baptist is John the Baptist. And everyone in Jerusalem know, knew, knew him. Up to the kids. Even the kids knew him. So I don't know what's going on here. I'll leave it with you. The next one is the story about the baptism of Jesus. In here, and I'll take you first to John and what it says. John chapter 1, of course, verse 32. John the Baptist saying, I don't know him. I did not know him. So John the Baptist did not know Jesus. Okay. He spoke about him, but he did not know him. He didn't see him. All right. No, he, he, he's saying he didn't know him, though the Spirit came down, come down, even as dove and remained on him, and myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man who see the Spirit down and remained. Okay, so he's talking that. But then, if you go to Matthew, he knew him already, he was about to baptize him and all that. And the, 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 um, he baptized him, the dove, actually, or the, the spirit, came after the baptism, and, I, and the whole thing. Hmm. So, I, I don't know what's going on here. If you guys can understand this. Because in here... He did not know him. Okay, until the the one who sent him to baptize told him. Yeah, what did he tell him? He said, "When you see that one there, whom the spirit will come and stay on him." Yet in here he baptizes him. And that's it, they are okay, everything is okay. They even had a nice chat in here. So let it be so. Now it is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all the righteousness. And then after that came the door to all the things that he was doing here and he didn't know him. Yet, yet, um, in John here, John the Baptist is talking about him. Yeah? Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said a man comes after me, blah, 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 blah. So he knew everything about him. Yet, oh no, he did not know him. But he baptized him. And then later on, the 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 this Holy Spirit came down on Jesus. That was the time he would know him, but he knew him already, and he talked about him. Really confusing. I'll leave it with you. I'll move on. The next one is dedicated to my friend Jerry. Jerry actually, when he speaks about our beloved Prophet in Islam, Prophet Muhammad, he says that. Prophet Muhammad will testify to himself. That means he's a, he's lying. No no one saw what that what happened. Therefore, if a man testifies for himself, then he is lying. Okay. Now, here is what the the, the gospel says. Okay. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, chapter eight, says, "Even if I testify on my 
on behalf of my testimony is valid. Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 14. Let's go to chapter 5, the same gospel. I'll show you. Chapter 5, verse 31. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. Okay, then which is it? My testimony is not true. My testimony is valid. Hmm. Okay. And with this, I intend to wrap it up. Uh, and I testify now that there is no deity worthy of worship. I don't know why I always say worship. <laughs> but no deity worthy of worship. Ibadah. Except Allah, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah. Without a partner, without a son, without a father. And I bear witness and testify that Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Abraham and Noah peace be upon them all, are Allah's prophet, servant, and messengers. I invite you, my dear brother, who is reading this, to Islam, for there is no way this, the Bible that you hold, is the word of God. Re read, listen, open your heart, open your mind, and leave this come to the truth and the truth shall set you free from hellfire if you say that jesus is god then you are associating partners to him the one and only true god he himself jesus says that and eternal life is that they know you the one true god so come to the true god and is Allah be he glorified. That's it. So I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Salaamu Alaikum.